Now, let's start looking at a few things that you've probably seen before but may not have known the actual order names. We're starting with the Orthoptera and moving on to the Mantidea. The Orthoptera. The Orthoptera are the crickets, the grasshoppers, and the katydids. Now, they are named because of their wings. So, ortho means straight. Think about like when you go to an orthodontist. Straighten your teeth, right? Is that dentist again from Odonata? Okay, so terra means wings. So the orthoptera have those nice straight back wings. This is a really common group throughout the world. There's over 20,000 described species of orthopteran, and you probably know quite a few very, very well, especially living in this area. This group in general has a very tough leathery forewings called the tejmina. Uh, these are used for protection of these really uh, flying membranous hind wings. So you can see those really obviously here on the uh, um, this grasshopper. You can kind of see the tejmina here on the katydids, making it look like leaves. <clears throat> They're very closely related to cockroaches and to things like... Um, pincher bugs to talk about in just a minute. So closely related, in fact, that cockroaches used to be grouped with the orthopteran or into the, the orthopteran. So you might find references that put cockroaches and crickets together. This is just an ancient way of, or an older way of looking at it. I mean, if you look at the body form of like a cricket, especially the legs, it looks a heck of a lot like a cockroach. This is one of the reasons I personally think that people don't really like crickets. They remind them a lot of cockroaches and they're loud. So there we are. So you might see uh, cockroaches grouped in with the orthoptera and in some older texts. Now, orthopterans can be predaceous. They can be predators on other insects or they can be phytophagous. So phytophagous means plant eating. In fact, orthopterans are one of the largest groups of plant feeders out there, and they, they account for a huge amount of damage to plants. If you have a garden, if you have a, a large farm, whatever like that, you hate grasshoppers. They will come through and just obliterate things in really large numbers. This makes them a really big pest for farmers and gardeners. Some grasshoppers do cause some veterinary problems since they can be intermediate hosts for tapeworm. And this tapeworm can infest poultry. But for the most part, uh, these things aren't exactly veterinarily important. The adults in general are terrestrial. They have modified hind legs that are adapted for jumping. Look how large those uh, femora, the femurs, are on all of these examples. They're really, really big. This allows for that characteristic jumping. Now, most species have the ability to both make and detect sounds. They make these sounds um, through a process called stridulation. So stridulation, this is the rubbing together of body parts in order to produce these sounds. So depending on the species, they can rub the upper surface of one wing against the lower surface of another wing, or the inner surface of the hind leg against the outer surface of the front wing, or something of that nature. And these movements will cause that characteristic chirping or singing or song that we associate with orthopterans. Each species is going to produce a unique mating call. This mating call is used by members of the opposite sex to identify their own species and find mates within that own species. So there are some species of grasshoppers or crickets that look so incredibly similar to each other. There are no physical characteristics that we can tell, at least that we can see under a microscope, to tell them apart. The only thing that can tell them apart is their mating call. And this is what keeps them discrete species because they were only mate with that um, insect of the opposite sex that has the correct call. Now there is some, or there are some really interesting things going on with Orthoptera. Um, 
there are there is a particular species of cricket around here especially that is called the snowy tree cricket it's um called the temperature cricket colloquially and this is because it can actually help you determine the outdoor temperature so what you do with this temperature cricket is you count the number of chirps that the cricket uh, makes in 15 seconds so time it for 15 seconds count the number of chirps add 40 and this is going to equal the degrees in fahrenheit neat now, there's a lot of orthopterans around this area. This is what accounts for all of that singing or a lot of that singing that you hear or that chirping that you hear when you go outside during the day or the night. I've put together for you a little video of the uh, a series of orthopteran songs. These are crickets and katydids and grasshoppers and whatnot that are very, very common in this area. So listen to this video. It'll be up next. I've written on there the uh, species that makes this particular song. And then try to identify what you're hearing later tonight when you go outside or when it gets warmer and you start hearing these things all over the place. All right, so that was the crickets. Now, closely related to the Orthoptera are the Phasmatidea, or the walking sticks, or leaf bugs. They're named from the root word phasm, meaning phantom. This speaks to their ability to hide themselves. They engage in a type of lifestyle called the cryptic lifestyle. This means that the insect relies upon upon uh, mimicry or hiding they mimic other objects and they they move very very slowly so that they blend completely into the background so they would much rather hide than fight so they uh, mimic sticks or leaves or whatever plant that they happen to be sitting on and that gives them their common name of walking sticks or sometimes leaf bugs so, like I said, they're very closely related to Orthoptera, and they have a lot of the same types of characteristics. We, uh, we find this group most commonly in tropical and in subtropical climates. We do get some small species of stick insect here, so you'll start to see those when you go outside during the um, spring months, but they can be hard to see because they look exactly like sticks. Now, the Phasmatidae are all herbivores. They're all phytophagous, so they will feed on plants. <clears throat> this makes sense, since they live or they look like plants. They're most commonly found on those plants that they most resemble, and those plants that they most resemble tend to be their major food source. 
Some have wings, but most don't. Um, since the wings don't really fit in with the whole cryptic lifestyle type of thing, those that do have wings tend to have wings that fold back over their thorax and their abdomen and blend in nicely, and they only use them rarely to fly around. They go through a basic um, parametabolism life cycle, and when the adults drop eggs, they drop eggs that resemble seeds. And basically, these insects are just sitting in whatever plant they're in, like a tree, and they're going to drop the eggs that resemble the, the seeds of that particular plant. So they just drop them directly to the ground. And in some places, the uh, the egg laying, this oviposition, is so abundant that the egg falling out of the trees kind of sounds like rain on a tin roof. So you can walk around, it sounds like rain. These insects make fantastic pets. You can rear them indoors, you can put them in a terrarium. As long as you keep them warm and fed with plants, they're going to do great. You can buy them at a lot of exotic insect pet places, you can buy them online, and you can just sort of carry them around. They move very slowly, they're not going to try to fly away. They make fantastic pets. When these uh, species are attacked, if uh, something discovers that it happens to be something employing this cryptic life cycle, or lifestyle, um, some species can actually separate off their legs. These legs will regenerate during the next molt. This is really one of the only uh, groups that can completely regenerate uh, a new body part during a molt. In fact, it's the only group that can regenerate legs during a molt. Now, closely related to the Phasmatidea are the Mantidea, or the praying mantises. These guys have, mostly gals, have uh, bodies that are specialized for predation. So they have an elongate pronotum and, a, and large raptorial front legs. These legs are used to reach out and to grab food, and they bring that food back to their mandibulate mouth parts. So they feed on other insects, things that are flying by, but there are some really robust ones that will take in much larger things, like uh, this mantidea here. It's actually feeding on a bird. Right there, you can fe see it feeding on a hummingbird. Others have been known to feed on snakes or small mammals. And still others may practice cannibalism. So they will feed on each other. At the young stage, the nymphal stage of this group, there's a lot of cannibalism going on, which is why we don't see a lot of um, mantids out and about. Now, this is the only insect that can turn its head completely from side to side without moving any other part of the body. So you'll see this thing sitting around, blending into its background, and moving that ginormous head back and forth. <clears throat> the female has the um, notorious... Uh, characteristic of sometimes eating her mate while copulating. So this is actually not that common in real life. So you don't really see that happening in the wild because there's plenty of prey out there. Where we primarily see this and where you, all the jokes come from are when mantids are kept in captivity because they do make really great pets. But if you try to mate mantids in captivity, oftentimes the female isn't going to have enough of the lipids, enough of the uh, proteins that she needs in order to produce really robust eggs. So while she's mating, she's going to eat the head of her mate, where the brain is at, where all those really high quality lipids and that sort of thing Thing are found. Now, because they are predatory, they have a what's called sit and wait method of, of finding food. They tend to look a lot like their environment, so they have that same sort of cryptic type of life cycle or style. Uh, they're going to blend in with plant matter. So a lot of the mantids that you see around here, and we do have them, they look like leaves. So they're green, they have these leaf-like wings. Here's the raptorial front legs, big old eyes, big old mandibulate mouth parts. Others look like flowers. This is an orchid mantid mantid looks it's very very tiny looks exactly like an orchid species and it'll just sit on these flowers waiting for pollinators to come by reach out grab them and eat them now i said that mantids make great pets and they do so you can just buy these pretty much anywhere you can get certain species of mantids just at home depot they're used for biocontrol but you can buy them and there are certain places that actually make little collars and leashes for these things so you can put them on uh put them on the mantids and carry them around on your shoulder all right, that's it for these groups. Let me know if you have any questions.